Hello everyone, welcome to problem 3.20 and David Griffiths Electrodynamics. So this problem is going to be pretty short and sweet, um, not going to be long at all, but the problem statement is, suppose the potential V0 of theta at the surface of a sphere is specified and there is no charge inside or outside the sphere. Show that the charge density on the sphere is given by, um, well the equation in the book is what my final answer is, but E naught divided by two times the radius times the summation from L equals zero to infinity uh, of two L plus one whole squared times C sub L times the L Legendre polynomial of cosine of theta, where C sub L is given by an integral. So if you, know, you, if you have the textbook, just look in the book to actually see what it's saying, but Essentially, we have, you know, we, we know our potential and um, it's specific, the potential on the surface of the sphere, and we want to find the charge density as a function of the potential, and, you know, and somehow in relation to the potential. So, really, all this comes down to is using some equations from the textbook. So, equation 3.83, not 383, 3.83 gives us the charge density as a function of a sub l. And so this is um, an equation derived in chapter three by Griffiths. And a sub l, um, there's a couple different expressions for a sub l which we found throughout chapter three. One of them involves uh, the charge density. And actually one of, the, one of the first ones that we derived, the first relationship to a sub l we derived involves the potential. So, um, a sub l can be expressed this way, uh, 2l plus 1 divided by 2 times the radius to the lth power times the integral of the potential, uh, the known potential specified on the surface times the lth Legendre polynomial times sine of theta d theta. So using this, we can just plug it into um, this equation that we have for the charge density. All right, so we have for the charge density, when you plug in a sub l, you know, we get epsilon naught, which I pull out. We have the summation um, from l equals zero to infinity. We have two l, two l plus one from here. We have r to the l minus one from here. P sub l cosine theta from here. And then actually plugging in this expression for a sub l at the end, we get two l plus one over two times r to the l times this, times this integral. And then just rearranging some terms here, we pull out the epsilon naught and uh, pull out 1 over 2r. Um, so r to the l minus 1 over r to the l is just r to the uh, negative 1. So that's why we can pull out the r. We have the summation again. Then we have 2l plus 1, 2l plus 1, so that's 2l plus 1 squared. And then we have the p sub l from here. And then c sub l is just defined as the integral of v naught of theta, that's our known potential, and then p sub l cosine theta sine theta d theta. So that's just the rest of this, essentially. And that's really it. I mean, there's no other way around it. It's just using some known um, equations from the textbook. And it's, it's really just a problem of like, hey, can you figure out, uh, you know, can you rearrange some equations um, that we've already derived and, and come up with some new, you know, a new equation or something. So. Um, if you guys have any questions on this problem, please let me know, and I will talk to you guys later.